here. Glenn tweets, I'm looking forward to see if Jay Cutler can throw the ball more than 30 yards to our receivers, which Tannehill could not. Well, in 2015, the year we're talking about where Gaze and Cutler, uh, Cutler had one of his best years with Adam Gaze as a coordinator, Jay Cutler threw six touchdowns and one interception only on passes over 20 yards downfield. It was the best touchdown interception ratio of his career on longer passes. So. Was that the year that he was just chucking it up in the air and Alshon Jeffrey was making one ridiculous catch after another? The years all kind of blend yeah. together yeah. in my memory. But there was that one season where it felt like every week Alshon Jeffrey was making a touchdown catch in traffic that you couldn't believe. So maybe that's what part of what it was. The, the difference between Jeffrey and the Dolphin receivers are all kind of smallish. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey was that is, is was that tall. big physical guy. Another tweet. Uh, Golick really believes Cutler has more talent to work with in Miami. I don't know about that. I, I do. I, I think they do. Do, do you agree with that? I don't that? even think it's debatable. I, I absolutely think Again, he has more talent when, to work with. There was that year that Chicago had Brandon Marshall, Alshon I'm talking Jeffrey, about Forte, and Bennett, all of them. Right. I'm talking about 2015, the year Cutler had, again, he was 6-9 and nine as a starter, but his stats were good stats. That's the year I'm talking about. Well, you gave the number on the numbers on Landry, but how about the other receivers? They've got three legit wide receivers on that team. They, they People sometimes, I think, understate or underrate how good they are because – they they have unusual numbers and they're all kind of built the same, so they're they're almost they almost feels like they're interchangeable. You don't even know which one it is until after you know the the announcer says it. Um, if you if you're playing Ken, with them or against them on DraftKings, Kenny Stills he only had 42 receptions last year. Again, Jarvis Landry led few. the way. Can, uh, well, for for a receiver, I think you'd want a little more. But he had nine touchdowns. Right. He led the team in touchdowns. And who's third? So he was getting in uh, getting in the end zone. Devontae Parker was right. third with 56. 56. Mike and Mike, and and just, again, looking at it quickly, those three receivers for the Dolphins, Devontae Parker had 56 catches. He was second. Landry was first with 94, Parker 56, and then you had Kenny uh, Stills with 42. But Stills led the way with nine touchdowns. Landry had four, Parker had four, uh, Deion Sims had four. Uh, for, for receiving wise. That's what I'm so. saying. Go find a trio of wide receivers that combine to put up better numbers than that. They're not going to be a lot. I'm not saying they're going to be the best. And then throw in there, Jay Ajayi ran the ball 260 times for just under 1,300 yards, just a tick under five yards per carry, and had eight rushing touchdowns. And that's so. without playing the beginning of the season. Like, right. I even, never even heard of him before the season began. Uh, and then he showed up with his English accent, and he's, and he's running all over everybody. So they're good. The Dolphins are a good team. So it makes sense to me that they would go out and make a win-now kind of move because I do think that they view themselves, and correctly so, as a win-now team. Uh, I do have a stat here that he just sent me on the receiver's size. They're all small. Actually, Parker is Parker six he's three. Six three. He's six three. Landry's Landry five and, yeah. eleven. Stills. Uh, I remember him at Oklahoma. He played against uh, my boys, and that, that when Notre Dame went to Oklahoma in two thousand and twelve, uh, he's he is six. He's six one. So they're good, and Ajay is good. So the answer is yes, they're good. Plus, they have Julius Thomas, who they got in the trade from Jacksonville, who Peyton Manning made into a star in Denver. Uh, as a as a big time tight end, and he hasn't done much since then. Oh, so hasn't. we'll see if he can add anything to it. All right, let's do Straight Talk, which is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. The stories that came out of Miami suggested that the names the Dolphins considered when they were making a decision on who they bring in when they see just how bad it is with Tannehill include Kyle Orton, Tim Tebow, Colin Kaepernick, and they wind up signing Jay Cutler. Now again, of all of those, because of the history between um, Cutler. And gays, that one I understood it, and sure. it was actually the one that I was anticipating. Do you think? Do you think serious consideration was given to Tebow? I mean, I think is, it was another name. You realize gays and Tebow were together in Denver. Yes, that, I'm saying. that's saying names were brought up that gays was with. That that to me, but was that was that one where like you I think, even bother writing it down on the piece of paper? Oh no, I, I don't think it got any further than who who what quarterbacks did you coach when you were at Denver and in Chicago, and you start listing them, and then it went no further than that. That's my opinion, but I understand. Okay, here's a list. All right, who who did who did you coach? What quarterbacks did you coach? Well, you know, boom, boom, boom. Tim Tebow, one of them, but I don't think it got any further than that. No, okay. I, I think I, it was, I just read a story that said that's one of the people they quote unquote considered. I, and I'm I, just curious what considered means. To, to me, I just think it was the name of a quarterback who worked with Adam Gase, and went no further than that. And that's then my the next thing I'd like to uh, do, and again, we'll ask um, Dan Lebetard when he joins us because he's closer to the situation there in Miami than we are. 
Again, my on the owner of the Dolphins, Stephen Ross, is that he would be one of the owners who would sign Colin Kaepernick. Well, he had said, Stephen Ross, there was an article that I saw where he said he didn't have a problem with the guys kneeling. Right. You know? Well, he had multiple players on, on the Dolphins right, that did. Right. Um, Kaepernick started it, but he certainly right, was, right. as everyone remembers, by far, clearly not the only player no. in the NFL. No, not at all, but obviously the headliner there. So, as, as I said, so the owner, and, and that's the key in all of this, there are 32 decision makers as far as Colin Kaepernick is concerned. That it begins with, and that's the 32 owners. Are, are we, if the chance comes, would we sign him? And as I said, that discussion has already been. Anybody that says they haven't been, there hasn't been a discussion about that, whether it's we're not signing him or we'll talk about it if the opportunity presents itself, that's already been done. I, I guarantee you that has already been done. And uh, I, I, Stephen Ross, as we said, didn't have a problem with the kneeling. I just think Cutler was a better fit. Uh, for with Adam Gase in this offense than was Colin Kaepernick. But with the, it does you know, leave the question in place, what happens with Kaepernick? We are now on the verge of pretty much every team in the NFL. By, by this time, the end of the week, Every team in the NFL will have played their first preseason. They will, game. but I mean, it's getting late early. We're, out here. we're waiting for it. That's what we're waiting for is the injury. You know, that's what you thought you may have had in Baltimore. Uh, it with uh, and and as I as I said earlier about the owner there, kind of saying, "Pray for us." We're still thinking about it, and 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 I think you know where you don't know what you're going to do. It's and at the end of the day, it's their choice. You know, there are there are players calling owners cowards for not signing Colin Kaepernick. Listen, we can all say what we want to say, but it's up to them. And if you ever own a business, you get to call the shots, okay? And these owners own their teams, so they get to call the shots. And you may not like it, you may not agree with it, but they're in the position to do it, and they're the ones that are going to be the initial ones making the decision on Colin Kaepernick. So you wonder, he, it has to sort of, for him to get an opportunity now, it's going to have to fall into whatever that, um, whatever the, the, the what, what, is, what are those graphs called, like a Venn diagram or something like that, where there's like one circle and another and someplace they meet. There's a circle of owners who would consider Kaepernick right. and then the circle of teams that need a quarterback, i.e. someone gets hurt now, and they're gonna ha- there's going to have to be fit a, a in place there. where those yep. two things come exactly together. Right. And I would have thought Miami was a place. Again, there was the unique circumstance here with Cutler. I don't think there's another team in the league that would have signed Cutler. I genuinely don't believe there was another – well, I mean, they, pr- they may have kicked the tires – but there's, I don't think there's another team in the league that would have gone as far to signing John to J, John Cutler, Jay Cutler, this, as Miami this did. This was the perfect storm. It was. A, it was absolutely the perfect storm for Jay Cutler and not for Colin Kaepernick in this case. So it, it is going to have to happen somewhere else at this yep. point, and I don't know where that is. Here is a quote actually from Stephen Ross before the injury to Tannehill, again, the owner of the Dolphins, on whether or not Kaepernick is being blackballed. Quote, I would sure hope not. I know there's been a lot written about it, but you know owners and coaches, they'll do anything it takes to win if they think he can help them win i'm sure i would hope they would sign him well again that's certainly not the way well, it is playing out i don't believe it at all to be true I, I believe that there is for lack of a better word a disorganized blackballing going on here which is to say i don't think the owners got together and said you don't sign him you don't sign him i won't well, sign uh, yeah, him yeah but, but i think that most of the owners individually on their own will not sign if, him. if you're an owner and you say I, I he's not going to be on our team do you want to say that owner blackballed him then so be it the yeah. owner d- w- does doesn't want to sign him and as far as helping you in remember you heard steve bishotti one of the things he did say is he said we're about bringing guys in on to help this team win and he even said he goes i'm not sure how much i think kaepernick helps us win now that could be the i'm going to use the football talk as far as wins and losses to cover the fact that i don't want him on this team i have no idea not in the guy's head but all, all, what, what I do know is what I said before. That thing got dragged out, got to, in my eyes, got to be ridiculous because the conversations have been had already. So to say you're, you're hemming and hawing and thinking about it, I don't buy it. I, I just don't buy that. Straight Talk Wireless Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. And so here we are headlong into Pro Football 2017 and already huge stories out there to get to. We'll take a, a brief pause here. We have Bomani Jones coming this morning and Dan Lebitard, Herm Edwards, Keegan Michael Key will be in our studio. Fun and that should be yeah. great fun today as well. But coming up next, I, I, I've been looking forward to playing this for you. I'm dying to hear your reaction and anyone's who may not have had a chance to hear it yesterday. Tom Brady.